Now in science, the number of significant figures that we present a value to actually means something. It indicates the precision of the measurement. So for example, consider this apple. I measure the mass of this apple on my scales at home. My scales at home can measure mass to the nearest one gram. So when I placed this apple on those scales, it told me that the mass of the apple was 107 grams. Now it is correct for me to write this down as 107 grams. It would actually be incorrect for me to write it down as 107.0 grams because that would signal that I knew the mass of the apple to the nearest 0.1 gram and that it was exactly within that um, precision 107.0 grams, which isn't something that I can claim because I just don't know that. So I assume that you have learned about significant figures before and you're comfortable counting the number of significant figures. A quick recap of the rules around significant figures are that all non-zero digits are significant. Zeros appearing anywhere between two significant figures, so for our apple, which was 107 grams, the zero between the one and the seven, those are significant. Zeros to the left of significant figures are not significant. So for example, if you consider the number 0 0.00123, the zeros there are not significant. They are just placeholders to indicate how big our 123 is. Now zeros to the right of the significant figures may or may not be significant. There is some ambiguity there. If they're after a decimal place, then they are significant. So for example, if I wrote the mass of the apple as 107.0, that zero at, after the decimal place would be significant and that would be wrong for the case of my scales at home. Now, if there's no decimal place, then the zeros may or may not be significant. So consider the number 2300. This can have two, three or four significant figures. The zeros at the end may be significant or they may just be placeholders. So in this course, assume that a number such as 100 can have one, two or three significant figures. There are some conventions that you can use which indicate whether the zeros are significant or not. So one way to show whether numbers are significant is to write everything in scientific notation. So for example, if I had 2300 and it was only had two significant figures, I could write this as 2.3 times 10 to the three. If one of the zeros was significant, then I could write it as 2.30 times 10 to the three, which clearly shows that it has three significant figures. Or if two of them were significant, I could write this as 2.300 times 10 to the three. Now, because the significant figures indicate the precision with which we know a piece of data, this has implications for when we're doing calculations on the data. So for example, if I was throwing this apple and I measured its velocity to be 1.1 meters per second, so I know its velocity to two significant figures. If I was asked to calculate the kinetic energy of this apple, then I'd need to use my equation that the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared, and I'll substitute into that. So I know the mass is 107 grams, which I'll put into SI units, which is kilograms, so that 0 0.107 kilograms. So when I'm doing this calculation, the kinetic energy is equal to a half times 0 0.107 times 1.1 squared. And when I put all that into the calculator, I get that this is equal to 0 0.064735 joules. Now, if I wrote it down that way, I'd be suggesting that I knew the kinetic energy of my apple to five significant figures, because that's the number of non-zero digits that I have written down. However, that is a little ridiculous given that I only knew its mass with three significant figures and its velocity with two significant figures. So the rule of thumb is that you, in a calculation, you should give the answer with the same number of significant figures as the piece of data you used with the least number of significant figures. So for our kinetic energy, because we used mass with three significant figures and velocity with two significant figures, we'd want to give the kinetic energy 
also with two significant figures. So we'd write the kinetic energy as K is equal to 0.065 joules. And I'd put in brackets after that two sig fig, just to remind myself to give it with the right number of significant figures. And also if I was submitting this to indicate to the marker that I have considered the number of significant figures. Now, this is a rule of thumb. It does break down sometimes if we're doing subtraction because subtraction can actually cancel out some of the significant figures. So we can actually have to present it with less occasionally for subtraction. Now, in some cases, there may be a bit of ambiguity around the significant figures. So for example, if I threw up the apple and I, it was measured and I was told that the velocity of the apple was 10 meters per second. Well, I don't know if that is known to one significant figure or two significant figures. In this course, always assume that it is known to the greater number of significant figures in that case, so two. So um, when I was giving my kinetic energy in that case, I would still give it with two significant significant figures in the answer.